Hi everyone, John here and welcome to another of my Toon Boom Harmony tutorial videos. Uh, in this series we are drawing, rigging and animating a minion from scratch. And I'm pleased to say that after quite a lot of videos, today we are going to start the animation process. Yes! Uh, it's been a long, long time coming, but I'm pleased to say that we are going to animate him today. Uh, I reckon it's going to be, take quite a long time, so my plan is that I'm going to animate for about an hour today and then see how far I get and post that video up and then I'll probably have to do a second video to kind of finish him all off um, cause it'll, it'll be a, I reckon a couple of hours at least um, so that's the kind of the plan um, I've made a few amendments to the rig since our last video so I'll just quickly show you what I've done and um, the first basic thing was I, I put the minion into a group um, so I, I put a new composite on I moved all the um, minion parts onto the new composite and then grouped the whole thing into one new group which is here. I also extended the legs out a bit. After playing with him a little bit I felt that his um, legs were a bit too short for animation so I've made them a little bit longer. And the other thing that I've done is I've created a banana on a rope. Um, because my, my the kind of idea for the film is that it's a, I'm, I'm calling it minion fishing. So there's going to be a banana and the minion's going to try and grab hold of the banana. And then as he grabs hold of it, that he'll disappear off into the sky like, like he's been caught in fishing. So I've created this banana here, which basically I've added a rope. Which Let's turn the deformer off for a second. So I've added a rope and a banana. These are on separate layers. And I've added a deformer to the rope so that I can bend the rope. And I've connected the, the banana through the kinematic output. Um, so that's all ready to go and the minion is now ready to go. So one important point to say just quickly before I start is that animation is a very personal thing and it really is up to you how you do it. So the way I do it today is not the way to do it. Um, it's just the way that I like to animate, it's the way I can do it quickly and I get the results that I like. Um, studios and, and, and other, other animators will probably do it differently to me um, but that's just the way that I like to do it. Um, hopefully you can pick up a few tips and maybe you can even give me a few tips. Um, I'm more than happy to keep learning uh, through this whole process. Um, so yeah, so, just, so don't take my, what I do as the final way of animating. It's just the way that I like to animate. Um, so let's get going. Um, so obviously I've created the minion and the banana in this scene. But, but when you're animating I would always recommend that you start a new one. So that this is kind of like your template scene for your minion. So to do that, I'm going to go to my library tab up here, go to my stage library window, open it up, and then right click and go right to modify. Open it again and then do a new folder. And I'm going to open it again and then rename the folder. And I'm going to obviously call it rename folder minion. And then on the timeline, make sure that your things that you want to move into your library are collapsed back up to the, the top layer. So we've got the minion down here and the banana. So I'm just going to grab the minion and drag him over to the library window. And hopefully a little, win a little screen should appear. There we go, minion group, that's fine. I'll just say OK. And also the same for the banana. So drag that across into the library and say OK. Right, they're done now. So they're now saved in my library. So I can go ahead and create a new project. So I'm going to call this Minion Animation. And stick with the HDTV. Click Create. And I'll save what I've got here. OK, so here we go. So now we've got a brand new fresh project. So I'll go over to my, my, my library window again. Go to the uh, Minion folder. And basically now just drag back in those two items. So I've got the minion and the banana. So one really important thing to quickly mention before I start is um, stop motion keyframes. Now this will be a personal preference to you, but basically Harmony has the ability to add the in-between frames between your keyframes for you automatically, or you can do it manually. It's up to you completely. Personally, I like to do my animation with stop motion keyframes turned on, and then add in the um, tweening or interpolation um, uh, manually myself. So to make sure that yours is set up the same as mine, if you want to do that, if you go to your preferences, under the general tab, you have the stop motion keyframes button. So with it turned off, the software will tween for you. Uh, if you have it on, obviously it won't tween in between your keyframes. 
Right, I think we're now ready to get started. So to kind of get the scene set up, I'm going to add a new color card, which is white. I'm kind of going for the style of the Despicable Me 2 trailers. There's quite a lot of those on YouTube and stuff where they're kind of doing silly things on a white background with just basic shadows. So I'm going for that kind of style. So I'm going to stick just a, a white color card in, which is basically a white background. Um, and that, that's the start there. Um, I'm going to now add a camera so, as well, just to kind of get that set up and, and then add a peg. Like so, and this drawing layer I can delete for now, because I won't need that. So what we're going to do is basically position our minion, making sure that our animation button over here is turned on. Uh, you'll see the difference between the color that that's um, animation off and animation on. I'm then going to grab the minion uh, from the master peg and move him. Let's just keyframe him a second there. That's weird. Hang on, let me sort this issue out first. I found an issue. I found an issue. Where's the minion? Here he is. The uh, leg's not connected to the multi port out there, so we'll just add that quickly. Right, and let me just set the pivot point of that. Oh, I see another error in the, in the rig. Let's just check the other leg as well, just to be sure that one's set up properly as well. Right, let's just set that one. See, I've made amendments to my rig and then didn't actually check the rig again. So, mistake there. Anyway, right, so uh, they're, they're, they're working now. So let's just move him, him into position. And I'm going to take my banana and rope as well. And then with the camera, I'm just going to take go to my top and side view and just roughly get a position. I'm just going to turn the frame on, which is this little button over here, the third button in from the left. And I'm just going to drag the camera around until I get a kind of rough position that I'm happy with as a starting point. I want it to be quite low down. About there, I reckon. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new drawing layer and just call it line. And I'm basically just, just going to draw a template line in just for the like a ground marker. So that when he's doing his he's doing some jumps later, I know um, where the ground is. Let's make it a bit fatter. Like that. So that I, that obviously won't be there at the end of the, of the animation. That's just a kind of marker for me to know what I'm doing. So that's the basic setup of the scene. I'm now going to add the sound. Now this has been a quite a funny thing. I spent quite a lot of time looking for minion sound effects, like little voice clips to try and piece them all together. But I really couldn't find anything to make it sound good. So what I did was I made my own minion voice track. So I literally spent half an hour or so voicing this minion and then I changed the pitch and the speed to try and make it sound like a minion. Um, so to, to import this sound, file, import, sound, and then, uh, where are we, minion, here we go, so we'll import the sound, so it's not perfect, but I'm actually quite pleased with it on the whole, uh, I'll try and turn it up for you, and then we'll play it, see if you can hear it. <laughs> That gives you a little idea, so it's not too bad. Um, I'm going to double click on it to edit the sound. And I always like to start probably about 20 frames or so into the animation with the sound, so that it gives you a bit of time if you're editing to kind of cut between. So start it at roughly around 20. And then down here it tells you what's the last frame. So again, add another 10 or 20 frames on the end. So in this case, I'll probably end it about, say, 360. So close and then I'm going to drag this little red marker out to 360 and that will be the end of our animation. So it's, it's quite a short animation but hopefully you'll get the idea of what I'm doing. 
So now we've got the sound starting from roughly around frame 20 and going on to 360. Uh, we are now going to extend out our pieces. So I'm going to use shift and select them all and press F5. Oh, actually, one second, let's undo that. The minion is obviously all the other frames are in there. So I'm just going to select all the frames on the minion apart from the first one and hit, hit delete. And now go back and extend those out. Okay. Let's just keyframe Mr. Banana. Okay, so now it's all set up ready for animation. So, like I said, I like to go through the animation from the start to the end of the scene. Um, and I'll literally go frame by keyframe by keyframe as I go, and I'll start adding the tweening in a bit later when I'm happy with it. So I started off straight away by trying to put the character into a pose, um, and I realised that the mouth, uh, like a sad mouth, hadn't been created, so I had to kind of just quickly create a kind of more sad expression for his mouth. And then I cracked on with doing his first key pose. Now I do work on twos as such, so all of my key poses are created on odd numbers, so one, three, five, etc. So here I'm just blocking out the first keyframe and then flicking between the two to make sure that I'm happy with them. I was really, really pleased actually that I put the overalls on a separate layer, the kind of front part. Um, that really helped when I was animating to kind of give a sense of him turning and moving. I was giving a little bounce to the hair here, trying to make it look a little bit funky. Some people obviously do go through an animation and they'll do like all the main body moves and then they'll go back and do arms and then they'll go back and do the eyes and then they'll go and do the hair, etc, etc. But I quite like, as I said earlier, kind of going through and just doing every piece for each keyframe. Yeah, I was even add, adding in some blinks there as well. When it comes to animation, I would definitely always act out, literally physically act out what you're going to do before you animate. I always generally get off my chair and kind of pretend that I'm the character and literally act it out and then kind of, if you have to, make notes either with, you know, about the timing that you're doing or, or the actual actions you're doing, where your arms are, where your legs are, that kind of thing, if you're looking up or down. Um, cause that really does help when you're animating to kind of just give real life to the character. So here I'm just sort of starting to plan the movement towards the banana. Uh, I kind of realise quite soon I think that the banana is far too far away from him, so I do pull it in. So he's just seen the banana now, and he's, just, he's sort of going, oh, banana. He's trying to get a bit of expression into his arms. Again, just gentle bounces. Like when you're when you're animating, don't feel completely and utterly fixed to the rig. You know, the, the, the rig is really there just to kind of support your animation. But you know, feel free to break the rig. You know, please do break the rig because I think animation when you break the rig and stretch them and pull them and put those things in places where they shouldn't be as such, that actually makes stronger animation. So particularly in this kind of situation, and, and in, in the next video when we get on to doing the jump and stuff. Um, we'll, we'll really try and push the rig and, and do some extreme key poses to kind of really bring a bit of comical bounce to it. So here I'm just um, playing with the, you know, the, the rope and the banana, getting that to kind of come in and the banana to wobble a little bit as it comes in, just before we end this video. 
And now, and now this is the crucial bit. What I've done is I've taken all of my stop motion keyframes, I've tweened them all, and now I'm going through and I am changing the ease in and ease out on all the keyframes. So that as he moves, it goes from slow to fast and then back down to slow again. So I've been going for about an hour now. So I think I will bring this video to an end. I've kind of done the first section now between obviously the start and when he's going to start jumping for the banana. So I'll just play it for you quickly so you can see it. Banana. So, so far I'm quite happy with it. Obviously it's not a huge amount of movement yet because obviously he's just pondering and waiting. Um, and obviously in the next video we'll get onto him doing the jumps and stuff. So obviously that will be really crucial to get those kind of key poses right for that. Um, but that's going to be a good a good video. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed the start to this video and I will be back very shortly with the second section of the animation. Um, so thanks for watching and please do subscribe by clicking on the big red button. And if you want to watch the previous video, then please click on one of the buttons above my head. And of course, please do ask any questions that you have and I'll try and answer as best I can. All right, so thanks for watching again and I will see you soon. All right, bye.